Hi, it's Drew from Alza Video, and welcome to our seminar series, The Principles of Video Lighting. This is Seminar 1, Lighting Technology Choices. In Seminar 2, we will discuss CRI, or Color Render Index. And in Seminar 3, we will be investigating mixing sources and color correction. If you've ever made a film or a video, then most likely you've utilized one or more of these sources. These light sources have very different characteristics and will produce different results. We're going to start our discussion with tungsten incandescent. Incandescent lighting has a long history dating back to the early 1800s. There are hundreds of shapes and sizes and models available and some are specific to photography and video because they have a tight color temperature specification of 3200 degrees Kelvin. The incandescent light is produced by an electrical current burning a filament composed almost entirely of tungsten metal. This burning process produces a spectrum of light with most of the energy in the infrared and lower red. This produces a color temperature of a range between 2000 and 3200 degrees Kelvin. This is a graph of the spectrum of several sources including midday sunlight and various incandescent color temperature sources including 4100K and 3200K. Notice how much of the energy is infrared and heat. More importantly, incandescent light is very weak in the blue part of the spectrum, and this can cause rendering issues with some cameras. We've been told by some of our customers that the red camera has real rendering issues with incandescent light. This graph shows the visible light generated by a 3200K tungsten light. Notice how little blue light is produced. Because of all the heat generated, the efficiency of incandescent light is very poor at about 2%. Most governments are working to ban the sale of incandescent lights. Now let's review the pros and cons of tungsten lighting. The pros are high availability and low purchase cost. They're easily dimmable, but of course they do color shift and there is no ballast required. Now the cons are, they're very expensive to operate. They have high energy consumption and frequent bulb replacements. They get very hot and that includes a fire risk. They have a very short bulb life of between 20 to 100 hours. And remember, you can have the risk of a burnout in the middle of a shoot. They have high power consumption, and that means they can easily overload a 15 amp circuit. And don't forget, they're very weak in the blue part of the spectrum. Although tungsten incandescent is ubiquitous, there is a shift in the industry away from incandescent lighting. Fluorescent lights have a long history dating back to the 1940s. It was the war effort that accelerated the development and acceptance of this more efficient lighting technology. Fluorescent light is produced by a two-step process. First, mercury vapor in a sealed tube is excited by an electronic current to produce ultraviolet light. Then there is a phosphor coating on the inside of the glass tube and the short wavelength ultraviolet light is converted into visible light by the process of fluorescence. The color of light produced by a fluorescent light is determined by the chemical mixing of selected phosphors where each phosphor is responsible for selected colors. Because of this art, there are many color temperatures available today, including daylight 5600K, as with this Alzo compact fluorescent. Unfortunately, mercury vapor also produces a narrow band green light as well as ultraviolet. This is a graph of the spectrum of a fluorescent light and you can see the energy distribution is very irregular. 
This irregularity is not an issue for a camera sensor as sensors only record narrow frequencies of red, green, and blue and are not influenced by these low energy spikes. Notice the large energy produced in the green part of the spectrum. This is typically normalized by setting the white balance of the camera, but can cause issues when mixing with daylight or other technologies. Also, by careful selection of the phosphor chemistry, this green light can be greatly reduced, as with the example of this Alzo Videolux light tube. The intensity or luminous output of a fluorescent light is determined primarily by the surface area of the glass tube. So that's to say that more light equals a larger tube, as in this 45 watt alzo bulb versus this 85 watt. All fluorescent lights require ballast circuits, and there are two types of ballast. There's magnetic and electronic. Only high frequency electronic ballasts are suitable for video production because magnetic ballasts will cause flickering. This is a great concern when location shooting in industrial settings that have older magnetic ballasted feeling light fixtures. Another thing to watch out for is the cool white color temperature. Cool white is no good. It is one of the worst rendering light sources. And now let's review the pros and cons of fluorescent lights. The pros, they're of high availability and they're low cost per lumen. They have a long bulb life of between 5,000 and 10,000 hours. Some ballasts are easily dimmable, but there is some color shifting. They have a low power consumption, about one quarter of a tungsten bulb. There are many color temperature options, including 5600K and 3200K. And now the cons. Basically, they're fragile bulbs. There's a two to four minute warm up to stabilize the color temperature. They're not suitable as a hard, high contrast light source. They require electronic ballast and beware of magnetic ballast. They may produce a green cast when mixing with daylight and minus green filtration is required when mixing fluorescent lights. Mixed color temperature is very common in location shooting and beware of the cool white. In summary, Fluorescent lights are popular video production light sources because they're very affordable and they're highly efficient and therefore they don't get hot.